Hi, I'm Francesco de Misa, and this is a Java program related to relevant mathematical concepts. Specifically, I chose to create a program based on related rates. Considering the complexity of related rates, I, re I found it simpler and more effective to create a teaching tool for anyone who needs clarification on how to solve problems which use these related rates. First, I'll talk about related rates and their relevancy. Besides the fact that they are a prominent portion of the calculus curriculum, Related rates have true real-world application. As per their definition, related rates are the rate at which a quantity changes by relating that quantity to other quantities whose rate of change is already known. This can allow us to find many values such as the rate of change of distance or volume or speed of an object, for example. Here I'll demonstrate that related rates are primarily values that are derived using formulas of shapes such as a sphere. So, in our first example here, which I have actually done as the first uh, question in the program, we have a sphere. It is a balloon in this case. This balloon is being filled with air. Um, air is being added to it at a rate of 5 centimeters cubed per minute. Now, in related rates, uh, you can either account for increase or decrease of a value, and in this case, since it's increasing, that means that every value we're finding is going to be an increase. So, in the case of this balloon, all we really need to know is the rate of change. Uh, this is the rate of change of the volume. In addition to the current diameter before its increase, which we are given being 20 centimeters. This is all we need to find in order to find the thing that it's asking for, in this case the radius, the rate of change of the radius. Now, in order to do this, as explained in the answer, we can see that what we need is the rate of change of the radius, so dr the rate of change of the radius in comparison to time. So, what is this? Well, first, we'll say what we know. We know that the derivative of the velocity as a function of time is 5. This is essentially saying that the rate of change of the volume is 5. And so what we're trying to find is essentially the derivative of the rate of the radius. So, we know that the radius is equal to 10. We know this because the diameter is equal to 20. After converting that, we can see that we begin to use the concept of shapes. And since we're using a sphere here, and since we are talking about volume, we can use the formula for volume of a sphere. So in this case, we we'll know that the volume of a sphere is found by 4 over 3 multiplied by pi times radius cubed. But we need to do a little bit more work. We need to find the derivative. and In, to, in order to do that, we find the derivative of both sides. In this case, what we're going to be getting is the derivative of the volume equal to 4 pi r squared times the derivative of r, r being the radius. At this point, all you need to do is plug in the numbers because we already know the radius and we already know the derivative of the volume, which happens to be the change. So we can see that 5 is equal to 4 pi times 10 squared times the derivative of r. Now, this is what we're trying to find, so we just need to solve for this. And if we were to do that, we would find that the derivative of r is equal to 1 over 80 pi centimeters per minute. Dividing this in order to get a decimal answer, it would result in 0 .0039, 0 0.003978, etc., and we're just going to round it to three decimal places, so it'll just end up being 0 .004. And that is the answer to the first problem. Now, 
in this code, it's going to detail everything, providing the question with all the numbers and units, and then prompting the user for an answer. If the user gets the, if the, user gets the answer wrong three times, it will display an explanation of how to solve this problem correctly, which will ensure that the user can take advantage of as much learning material as possible, rather than just saying that the answer is incorrect and moving on, for, uh, for example. Um, it will wait after showing the, the answer for about 10 seconds in order for the user to truly grasp what they're looking at. Um, and this is a very simple program. It's going to only use about three major for loops. Um, and within those for loops are going to be a couple of if statements. Um, it's a very simple program. Um, in order to prevent any kind of confusion on the part of the user. The majority of the program ends up being the actual problems and answers, which is what we want the user to be focusing on. So if we run the program, we'll let it go. Oh, this is the wrong one, actually. I'll have to change it to related rates. Stop that. No. All right. So it's kind of cut off. We'll make this full screen. OK, now you can see. So the first problem, it is that answer that we found before, and we know that that is 0 0.004. So that's correct. That's fantastic. Now, what happens if you get the problem wrong? So the next answer to the problem should be negative 72. Um, it's the rate of change of um, distance in this case. Um, so instead of negative 72, what if you say 72? it'll say that it's incorrect and you have two attempts remaining. And so what happens if you run out of answers? Well, here it will provide an in-depth explanation on how to solve this problem. Um, it'll wait a few seconds and then once it finishes and once the user has finished uh, looking over and seeing what mistakes that they made, it will then prompt the user with the next question. In this case, we'll just move on and it is once again a decimal answer rounded, so we'll say 0.358 and the code will end once all three problems are done. You can run this as many times as you want, see all the different problems, the examples, and in order to learn related rates.